Welcome. What a great day to be Irish. We are pleased to uh, have you join us today as we officially introduce Notre Dame's new head coach and his family. It's especially fitting that today's program begin with remarks from University President Father John Jenkins. It's Father Jenkins' leadership that ensures that Notre Dame athletics remains integrated into the educational mission of the university, as much or more so than any university in America. It is the leading characteristic of the department and ultimately defines most of the decisions we make, including hiring our head coach. And it is Father Jenkins, who along with other key members of the university leadership, ensure that the hiring process that allows us to be here today, less than one week after being notified we would have a vacancy, is free from undue influence or interference, and a circumstance that is increasingly rare in college athletics. As you would imagine, Father John and I were in frequent communication last week. However, our ability to do so was complicated by the fact that he was in Rome. I understood that that resulted in a lot of sleep deprivation for me, but I, on the other hand, was comforted by the fact that his location might produce the extra measure of spiritual guidance needed to make sure we got the right result. Please welcome University of Notre Dame's 17th president, John Jenkins. Thank you, Jack, and greetings to all present today, as well as those watching online. On behalf of our students, our faculty, our staff here in South Bend, and at our Notre Dame gateways across the globe, I extend our warmest Congratulations to Marcus Freeman, to Joanna, and their lovely children there. It is a great day for Notre Dame as we welcome our new head coach. You know, the story of Notre Dame football includes numerous national championships, legendary coaches, All-American players, and NFL Hall of Fame alumni. Yet the heart of Notre Dame football is a set of values reflective of this educational institution. They include faith, acting with integrity, a commitment to the academic success and the personal growth of our student athletes, a commitment to team over oneself, a commitment to service in the world, and all of those are combined with a determination to compete at the very highest level in college football. When we undertook this search, Jack Swarbrick and I knew we needed a head coach who not only embraced but even embodied those values. We found that coach in Marcus Freeman. Last week during our search, as Jack mentioned, I was in Rome. I wasn't consulting on the search but I had some previously scheduled meetings. When I interviewed Coach Freeman by Zoom from my hotel room, my first question was simply, why do you coach? He gave me a characteristically honest and thoughtful answer. He said he got into coaching after his NFL career was abruptly cut short by a medical diagnosis of an enlarged heart. He loved football and wanted to stay around the excitement of the game, and coaching would allow him to do that. However, as he did the job, he said he found the really gratifying part was a chance to work with young men, help them achieve their goals, and grow into mature, responsible adults who will better the lives of the people around them. Marcus Freeman is clearly someone who influences young people by showing he cares about them, winning their trust, inspiring them, and challenging them to do great things. Anyone who saw the video of his introduction to the team last Friday has seen the impact he has had at Notre Dame after just one year. He lives the educational ideals 
that are at the heart of this program and this university. Thank you, Marcus, for accepting the challenge to lead our team. Another person who lives those ideals is our athletic director, Jack Swarbrick, whom I have had the privilege to work with as a colleague leading our athletics department for the past almost 14 years. I thank him for his leadership of this department and for this very successful search. Thank you. Thank you, Father John, for your words and leadership. Now I'd like to formally present to everyone Notre Dame's 12th Athletics Director and a 1976 graduate of the University of Notre Dame, University Vice President and James E. Rohr, Director of Athletics, Jack Swarbrick. Thanks, Brady. Thank you very much. I, I will be brief so we can get to the main event here. Uh, but I wanted to offer an insight into the search and thank a few key people. First, however, I want to echo Father John's greeting to Marcus's family. Uh, they're, of course, not new to us. They've been with us for a year. But the energy and dynamism that they will bring to the, our football family uh, going forward is a really exciting part of this. Much has been written in the past few days suggesting that the members of our football team selected their head coach. That's not true. And in a way, it diminishes what Coach Freeman has achieved. In a highly competitive environment with lots of excellent choices available to us, Marcus won the job. He won the job in the way he prepared himself through each of his coaching experiences. He won it during the past year when I was able to observe him as a colleague, coach, mentor, and educator. And he won it in his interviews with me, Father Jenkins, and the others who participated in that process. Having said that, I do want to acknowledge the critically important role that our student athletes played in this process. There are moments in this job that can be exceptionally challenging. But they are more than offset by special moments, moments of extraordinary privilege, the sort of moments that define this university. One of, that, one of those moments occurred last Tuesday at 2.15 in the afternoon. It was then that Ron Paulus and I met with the seven captains of this year's football team who are seated in the second row up front here. It's a standard part of the process whenever I hire a head coach at Notre Dame that I, that I spend time with the leadership of the program, the student athletes, to get their input. These gatherings are not to solicit candidate names or evaluate candidates. It is instead to discuss the characteristics that we ought to have in a future head coach. After I introduce this topic to the team captains, they explained they had a different agenda. They were passionate, they were articulate, they were convincing, but what they insisted I understand was that they had built the best culture in college football. That they have friends playing at other places around the country, they have a way to make that assessment, and they were confident that this culture in this program was the best in the country. But they, were also, they also wanted me to know that they owned that culture. They built it. It was theirs. And their message, stated clearly and convincingly, was, Jack, don't screw this up. I got the message. In short, they convinced me that I had two separate tasks in front of me. One was to select the best possible coach to lead the program. The other was to protect the culture they had built. It was an unusual situation to be in and took me down two parallel paths. It was, for example, the protection of the culture that led me to make the unusual decision to make a commitment to our director of performance, Matt Bayless, that regardless of who became the head coach, he, the Minister of Culture, if you would, 
would stay in his position. It was the same motivation that caused me to begin parallel negotiations with a critical part of this team in this culture, Tom Reese, before I knew for sure who the head coach would be. To be sure, the perspective that those seven captains offered to me put a heavy finger on the scale in favor of Coach Freeman. But that was only because they and I believe so strongly that Marcus is the perfect guardian of the very special culture you, the student athletes, have built. When reflecting on my time as Notre Dame's athletic director, I certainly remember the special victories and some of the agonizing defeats. But most of all, I remember the moments like those 45 minutes spent with seven young men, extraordinary people representative of the student athletes at this university that I have the privilege with of working with every day. Now a few thank yous. In addition to Father John for his leadership and support throughout this process, I want to thank the other members of the university leadership who were involved, with special thanks to Tricia Belia, our faculty athletic rep, who is always such a great source of counsel and advice during processes like this. I want to thank the members of the War Cabinet, three people who never left my side for four days, despite the fact there were a lot of times I think they wanted to. That includes Ron Paulus, the Associate Athletics Director and Sport Administrator for Football, Jenny Borg, the, uh, an advisor to me in charge of athletic strategy and culture, and Aaron Horvath, Assistant Athletics Director for Communication. And finally, uh, Katie Lonergan, Assistant Director of Football Communications uh, for Notre Dame, who took on a whole host of assignments during this week and did all of them exceptionally well. They and many others brought us to this day, but what most significantly brought us to this day in such short order was that we had available to us the best possible candidate in America to lead this program and protect this culture and serve this university. Ladies and gentlemen, the 30th head coach of the University of Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman. A lot of people here. <laughs> All right. Um, to Father John and Jack Schwarbert, um, I am forever grateful for this opportunity uh, to lead this football program. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge, and I'm ready to lead this program to the greatest heights. The chance to lead the, the football program at the University of Notre Dame is an opportunity of a lifetime. And I would never take that for granted. Being this leader of this program, it isn't about one person, and it never will be. Being the leader of this program is about understanding to be successful on this journey, it's going to take others. And we're going to have to do this as a team. And that's why doing it at the University of Notre Dame is so special. It's special because of the people. The people here make this opportunity special. The people that are currently here, the students, the faculty, the countless other people that step on this campus, the people that have come through Notre Dame and have planted themselves throughout the world, the Notre Dame network that at any moment, for any reason, will find you a solution. The players. I was looking for a term to describe you. And Katie helped me come up with one that, that really, really exemplifies what you are. You're exceptional thinkers. 
You're exceptional thinkers. You never look for the easy path. You never take short, most of you never take shortcuts. <laughs> you're tireless workers and you're committed to excellence in everything you do and that's what separates you. Over the past few days, I've spoken to a lot of leaders that I respect for any advice on being a first time head coach and the answer has all been the same. Just be you. So who is Marcus Freeman? Well, I'm the son of a man who was in the Air Force for 26 years. I'm the son of a woman who was born in Korea that came over here in 1976. But I tell you that because that's who I am. I get my discipline, my work ethic, my honesty from my father. I get my unselfishness and other-centered focus from my mother. And that's exactly how I'll lead this football program. We will be disciplined. We will be tough. We will work tirelessly. But we will do it with the understanding that no one person, no one coach is more important than another. And as a team and as a family, we will accomplish all of our goals. I plan on leading this team with an unwavering standard. We will call it the golden standard. So what is the golden standard? Number one is challenge everything. This is why I'm here. Our leaders challenge normalcy. Our athletic director, our president challenge normalcy. Challenge everything is a mentality to find a better way. Number two is unit strength. Unit strength means love. It's making a choice to love your teammates. It's what turns players into a team. And number three is the competitive spirit. It's creating a winner's mindset. I believe that leaders are born, but winners are created. And you're created through intentional actions. And as I previously stated, this standard will be unwavering. And this is the standard that will drive this football program to its 12th national championship. Lastly, there's a few thank yous I want to give. I want to start with my wife, Joanna, my wife, my partner. Um, thank you for your unselfishness. Thank you for always being there and your support most of the time. You can be my toughest critic, but thank you for just being there. To my kids, Benny, Sienna, Gino, Rocco, Capri, Nico. Sorry, I got all six. There he is. You didn't ask for this. You didn't, you didn't ask to share your dad, but you have to. And I love you. To Father Jenkins, Jack Swarbert, thank you for challenging everything. Thank you for making a decision to believe in a 35-year-old first-time head coach. And I vow to work tirelessly to never disappoint you. Be back there laughing either. All right, to the Board of Trustees and countless others that approved my hire, thank you. My current and former players, you are my why. You are my motivation. You are the reason I get up every day and work as hard as I can to see you all reach your goals, to see you all set a goal and live out a dream is what gives me my inspiration every day to do what I do. Last but not least, my parents. I've kind of told you their story, but I just want you to know when others say, just be yourself, I am me because of you. In closing, I'm ready to get to work. My sense of urgency is for right now. It's to make sure that this team is prepared on January 1st in the Fiesta Bowl to be victorious versus Oklahoma State. And that's where our focus will be. With that, I'll turn it over to Brady. You can leave it. If, uh, if members of the media would like to ask a question to Coach Freeman or Jack Swarbrick,
please raise your hand and a microphone will be brought to you. Before asking your question, please stand up, state your name and organization. Uh, Coach Freeman, I'm gonna kick this off with the first question. So this is technically your fourth day. You need water? Thank you. Okay, I got you. It's technically your fourth day. Just take us through what this past week has been like. Well, it's been a, it's been a pretty crazy. Um, just from the minute, you know, I knew Coach Kelly was going to go to LSU to the to now. It's been a whirlwind. So the thing I've learned as the head coach, you just got to take things moment by moment by moment and and not look at it as the big picture. You got to take things moment by moment. And uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Tim Priester, Irish Illustrated. Coach, congratulations to you and your family. Um, you obviously convinced Jack Swarbrick and the University of Notre Dame to have confidence in you. How does a 35-year-old guy who's never been a head coach have the confidence that, that you can uphold the, the vast tradition of Notre Dame football? You know, Tim, I gotta be myself. And that's what I told him. Here's the things that I believe we can do to raise the level, to raise the standard, but I'm going to do it the only way I know how, and that's being myself, and that's doing it as a teammate. That's doing it with others. We're going to achieve greatness as a group, as a team, and they accepted it. They accepted it, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this thing together as a team. You may have already touched upon this, but what adjustments will you make within your program to put your stamp on it? Well, I think it starts with we're going to recruit at the highest level and we're going to recruit the best football players in the country that fit Notre Dame. And you're not going to change the standards at Notre Dame, but there are certain players out there that fit Notre Dame that they might not know. And so our job as a coaching staff is to be able to communicate with these young people what Notre Dame can do for your life. And that's what I plan on doing. If I could uh, ask a short-term question for the bowl, procedurally, how will you handle the moving pieces for the bowl game? And have you made a decision on defensive coordinator in, in 2022? Not yet, no, I have not. Uh, my focus right now is just for this upcoming bowl game and, and we will not name a defensive coordinator for next year until after the bowl game. Uh, but all the coaches, we all plan to go as we've gotten here. We're gonna we'll go to work. We're not making changes, and we're going to coach the way we've coached that's gotten to this point. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Vince D'Addario with Irish Breakdown. Coach, uh, just to kind of follow up on Tim, so are you planning on calling the plays uh, in the Fiesta Bowl? I haven't decided that. I have not made that decision. I think this week when I'm on the road, I'm ready to get recruiting, and uh, I'll kind of figure out what's going to be the best for our staff, where I can put – my attention to because what I won't do is I won't cheat those players and if I can't give them my full attention I can't make sure they're prepared then I'll have somebody else um, call the plays and then real quick what is your philosophy on hiring assistant coaches what attributes are you looking for to fill out your staff moving forward uh, number one you have to be a leader of young men you're gonna have to treat these guys the way I believe you have to treat young people number two you got to be a relentless recruiter if you can't recruit, then it probably ain't going to be the best for our university and our team. Marcus, Marcus Chuck Freeby, WHME and WNDU TV. Congratulations Thanks, on your Chuck. promotion. First question: How would you describe your offensive philosophy? <laughs> well, it's what you've seen on the field, right? It's what you've seen Tommy do. Um, you know, when I talked to Jack Swarbert about. The opportunity to keep Tommy Reese, that was without question. And what you see from our offense of side of the ball is a group that from the beginning to the season till now has just played better and better and better. I'm not looking for a certain scheme. I'm looking for a group that's productive and does the job necessary to win. As a father of six myself, I'm Ooh. curious, how do you balance the immense responsibility of being the head coach of the University of Notre Dame with the immense responsibility of being a father and a husband. Yeah, it's, it starts with having an unselfish wife and understanding that there's gonna be things you miss. There's gonna be times that, you know, you're gonna miss some certain things because of what this job entails. But you have to have people around you that are willing to tell you, hey, go home, go spend time with your family. 
And that's what I plan on doing. We will build a trust amongst our football support staff, our coaching staff, that we all are going to be able to remind ourselves what really matters here. Trust me, she will tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. Marcus, Pete Sampson from The Athletic. Uh, congratulations. Thanks, Pete. In the locker room, you talked about how things are not going to change, but you want to enhance. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to enhance? What, what comes to mind first? Well, when I say that, it's the, the goal is to win. The goal is to win it all. The goal is to win a national championship. That's the ultimate goal. But how you get there, it's going to take a process. It's going to take enhancing whatever we've done to get to this point. It's going to take looking at every single thing we do as a football organization and finding a better way to do it. It goes back to challenge everything. We have to find a better way to do everything we do. We have to coach better. We have to teach better. We have to recruit better. We have to perform better. Everything we do, we got to find a better way to do it. There, there are some head coaches that delegate with recruiting. There are some head coaches that sort of see themselves as head coach of recruiting. How, how do you sort of see the, the division of labor, so to speak, with that part of the job? I better be the number one recruiter. I better be the lead recruiter in every kid that we recruit, and I plan on doing it. We obviously have to depend on our staff, and I will depend on our staff to make sure we know who and what and why we're recruiting every individual. But if I'm not the lead recruiter, then we're cheating. And you, you also have talked about how Notre Dame has changed you if, if you let it. Um, in what ways? Like, how, how have you sort of changed as a person over the last 11 months? Well, I think coming in from being an outsider coming in, there's times you think you can come to Notre Dame and say, I'm going to change. I'm going to change who can come in here. I'm going to change who can have success here. You won't. You have to embrace this place. You have to embrace the things that make us different. You have to embrace the, the, the people here that are different. You have to embrace the, the competitive thinkers, the, the, the individuals that are on this football team. If you embrace everything that comes with the University of Notre Dame, you're going to be better because of it. And it's better, you can put a line there, better person, better football player, better student, better mother, father. But if you embrace this place, you're going to be better because of it. Eric Hansen, South Bend Tribune. Marcus, uh, first question I wanted to ask you was about national championship aspirations, not too high for you. But I think you were a toddler when Notre Dame won its last one. At three different junctures, I wonder how these kind of align with your belief in Notre Dame's ability to win a national championship. When you were a recruit, when Tyrone Willingham was trying to get you here, as an outsider before you started coaching here, and then today. Uh, as a recruit, I mean, it's 2000, 2002 or three. You know, they hadn't won one, but you still knew the history and tradition behind Notre Dame, and you think you thought probably as every at every year that Notre Dame had a chance to win it. Um, as an outsider before I got here, I mean, Notre Dame was in the playoffs two out of the past three years before I got here. So if you're making the playoffs, you have a chance to win it all. Now that I'm here, we're close. We're close. We're not there yet. We're not there yet, but we're close, and it can be done. Right, in, right away. We're not talking about a future long-term plan. This is talking about the, the urgency, I said, for now to finish the season off. And then next year, we have to have intentional efforts to make sure we're doing whatever it takes to put this team in position to win a national championship. When you came in recruiting right out of the gate, you had very high expectations of the kind of players you could go get. What clicked with you that you felt like maybe Notre Dame needed to aim higher in recruiting? Well, I, did. I think it's the ability to communicate with the best players in the country that this place is special. And that's what people keep saying, what's the difference? What do you, what do you understand about this place now that you're here? It's just that whatever these, and maybe at 16 or 17, when, you were, and when I was recruited, I was looking for, hey, where can I go win a national championship? Well, if that's all you're looking for, you can look right here at Notre Dame, because we've been in the playoffs two out of the past three years. But it's the ability to show these young people, get their minds to think past football, get their minds to think whatever that point is, as these guys will tell you, whenever that point is when you're done playing, it could be after your senior year, it can be one year in the NFL, it could be 10 years in the NFL. The minute you're done playing, that's to me where the value of Notre Dame really shows itself. And that's what we got to be able to do is get these young people that are the best players in the country that fit Notre Dame to understand there is no better option for you. 
My last question is a bold question. Uh, do you know yet whether Kyle Hamilton will be able to be a part of your, your bowl experience? I knew at some point that was going to come up. No, we, you know, I've communicated clearly with Kyle. His health is the number one importance for any decision we make. And whatever is best for him and whatever is best for his health, I am going to support. And so we have not had that conversation. We have not made a decision. He hasn't made a decision. And, but he knows that he has the full support of his head coach. Whatever is best for Kyle Hamilton, I'm in full support of. Thank you. Good afternoon, Marcus. John Bryce, Football Scoop and ISD. Congratulations, first and foremost. Secondly here, I think it was almost 11 months to the day, January 4th, that you were here on a Monday interviewing for the defensive coordinator position. Now you stand here today as Notre Dame's head football coach. How do you reconcile with yourself what the last 11 months have been like for you? And, and maybe what are some of the moments along the way that let you know um, not only that you want to be a head coach, but you want to be a head coach at Notre Dame? Well, wow. I mean, I couldn't, I wish I could point out every moment that, that led to this point, but you just look and you think about, I told the defense, the defense unit in a meeting towards the end of the year, the ability to love a group of guys in 11 months, like that's, that's to me what shows you the power of Notre Dame. The minute to be around, the, the ability to be around a group of guys and to fall in love and trust me. And, and that's what let's, I want to make sure everybody understands, like I've been asked this question a couple of times, being a player, your players are really happy. They were excited. That doesn't mean that it's all warm and fuzzy. They understand the expectation. They understand to achieve anything, it's going to be really hard and they're going to be pushed and they're going to be pushed with hard, but they got a leader and they have leaders around them that care about them, that have their best interest at heart. And that's how we're going to create success here, is that we're going to push each other, but they know their leaders trust them. And they know their leaders love them. Um, but that, to me, is like what has gotten us to this point is over 11 months, you've gotten to a point where you feel that way about a group of guys. And I hope it's the feelings mutual most of the time. And so um, the other part of that question, do I ever think I'd be the head coach at Notre Dame in 11 months? No, I mean, that's not realistic. That, that well, I guess it is now, you know. <laughs> I guess now it is, but um, but it is. It is a dream come true. It is, um, and every once in a while, I sit back and I say, "Whoa, you're uh, you are the head coach of University of Notre Dame." But a minute that, that that once that second goes up, it's about get back to work. Get back to work. Last one from me. Your your candor shows it it resonates. So I wonder if you would provide us a glimpse into maybe the 72 to 96 hour window from uh, last Sunday through Wednesday and what that was like for you, how much you leaned on your wife, and, and how late some of those nights might have stretched for you. <laughs> yeah, we haven't got a whole bunch of sleep. Um, but again, when Coach Kelly calls and says, hey, I'm going, to, I'm going to LSU, and then he says, will you go as my defensive coordinator? And I said, yeah, I need a job, but can I talk to my wife? That's all I said, can I talk to my wife? And he said, yeah. And from that moment, it's been a whirlwind, you know, and just the, the conversations you have, the people you have to talk to, the, the, the conversations you have with players. I mean, it's, it's all crazy. I don't want to get into the details of what those next 48 hours were like or 72 hours, but it was, it was pretty hectic, not a lot of sleep. And, but the result of it is you're the head coach of Notre Dame. So we'll take it any time. <laughs> Hey, Coach, over here, uh, Coley Harvey from ESPN. Congratulations again. Thanks, Coley. Um, one thing I want to ask you about is you've mentioned this, but what were your goals and dreams from a football standpoint when you were growing up? I mean, it's just to be the best at what you do. You know, it was to be the best at what you do. And I didn't care if I was in high school. I wanted to be the best football player I can be. Right? I got to college, I wanted to be the best college football player I could be and be a part of the best team I could be. You get drafted in the NFL, you want to be the best NFL player you can be. And then I had a, a moment where I had to make a decision. What's next for me? You know, and I got into coaching, and I've told this story before, but I got into coaching because I was like, man, I want to stay around football. I want to stay around the game. I want to be on the sidelines. I love it. But then you realize very quickly 
that the satisfaction and gratification you get is seeing young people reach their goals. So the minute I be, I realized that, I said, I'm going to be the best football coach I can be. I never said I'm going to come. I'm going to be the head coach. And I just want to be the best football coach, the best leader for a group of young men that I can be. And that's how I'll continue to attack the rest of my life. You've mentioned preparing them for life after or not just football, but even beyond football. How do you go about doing that? I think back to, you know, the lessons I learned, right? And maybe not as much as the things people said, but the actions that they did. You know, and that's how am I going to help influence this group of young men? It's not going to be always what I say. It's going to be my actions. I want them to see me as a husband. I want them to see me as a father. I want them to see me as a leader, um, as a friend, as a colleague. You know, I want to, them to see physically with their eyes my actions because that's, to me, what's going to be the most la lasting impact they're going to have. Uh, the last question for me is uh, you and I actually spoke about this yesterday, but what example does your hiring set at a school like Notre Dame when we do see the trends in college football when it comes to hiring coaches of color, specifically black coaches, uh, what, what does this example set for the future? Well, I think it's... it's you can do whatever you want, right? You can be whoever you want. You just got to do it the right way. You got to treat people with respect. You, 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 if you work hard and you, you do the right things, the, the opportunities are endless. And, and hopefully it shows that there can be representation of all colors. There can be representation of, of anyone, any ethnicity, any background, and that if you're the right leader and you can make others better, that you can be in a position of leadership. That's it for our Q&A, Coach. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Thanks, man. Jack, Father Jenkins, thank you. Thank you to everyone for coming out. Uh, the players will be available for media at the South Gate. I will keep, it, keep you in mind they have a 3 p.m. team meeting, so keep that in mind when you're answering your questions. Thank you, and go Irish.